And we're going to look at one more word problem that's, again, just a little bit more advanced, I would say, not so straightforward when you compare it to the ones we've done before. Um, it says that Kyle is trying to determine the height of an apartment building that he spots in the distance. So let's draw our apartment building. So there's the building, and like, let's make the ground, I guess, right here. All right, so here's the here's his building, and he's over here. We'll draw Kyle. Kyle is right here, and he spots this apartment building. He's trying to figure out the height of it. <clears throat> he determines the angle of elevation to the top of the building is 42 degrees. So let's recall what angle of elevation means. That means and again, think of like elevator to, to, to go up. It means from him to the top of the building. And again, uh, we're going to assume again that the elevation goes to his feet. So that angles, uh, that is the angle of elevation right here. And that is 42 degrees. Then it says he moves 16 feet closer. So if he moves 16 feet closer, that means, well, he moves closer, and if he's right here, let's say 16 feet closer, brings him right here. So let's draw in. So, like, he moves 16 feet closer, and now he's here. So now he's, like, right here. So the question is, and so when he does that, when he does that, now his angle of elevation is 48 degrees. So now here's the question. Uh, where do I label the 16, right? He moves 16 feet closer. Well, if you move closer to someone a certain number of feet, that would represent this distance here, right? It doesn't say he moved until he was 16 feet away from the building. It means he moved 16 feet closer to the building. So this section here is 16 feet. And then we're asked to determine the height of this apartment building. So there's something about this problem that makes you feel like you don't have enough information to solve it, but the truth is we actually do. Um, so how do we do it? Well, uh, first of all, I don't know. I know that this is 16, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know the length of this whole side, and in particular, I don't know the length of this little triangle, the, this base right here, so I'm going to call that x. And we want to know the height of this, this building, so I'm going to call that h. So, now what? Well, as in the last problem, you'll notice that we have two right triangles, right? We've got one right here that I want to put in, in yellow. We've got that right triangle. And then we have one that's like the bigger one. Right? So we've got two right triangles here. And the key to answering this problem is to sort of separate the two triangles, separate the two triangles, um, and to sort of figure out what would we have to do to get h if we were just focusing on each of those triangles. So let's let's call the, the little triangle here, uh, you know, let's, let's do the little triangle over here. Now, if we look just at the little triangle, again, I'm trying to find h. Is there a trig function that relates this 48 degrees with the, X, the H and the X. And if you think for a second, that must be tangent. The tangent of 48 degrees equals H over X. OK, so that's not so helpful because there's two variables, which is a little unfortunate. But let's just go over now to the, the, other, the big triangle and see what that tells us. If you look at the big triangle, 
if I look at the big triangle, then I'm looking at the green one, then is there a trig relation that relates the 42 degrees with the H? And maybe this whole side? <clears throat> well, I think it's also tangent, right? Opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to write tangent of 42 degrees equals opposite is H. And uh, I'm adjacent is this whole distance. Well, this is a distance x, and that's 16. So this whole distance is x plus 16. So h over x plus 16. So now, what do we do? Well, we have an equation here that has two variables, and we have another equation that has two variables, h and x. Whenever you have that, two equations with two variables, you can solve for both of them. It's no different than in Algebra 1 when you had like, you know, 2x plus y equals 4, but then below it we'd say like x plus y equals 7. That's enough information, that's a system of equations that would let, allow you to solve that equation, uh, solve, solve for x and y. So we can solve this. Now we're not going to use uh, sub, we're not going to use elimination. If you remember, that's the technique of sort of stacking the variables and, and subtracting. What I think we're going to do, uh, I think a good way to do it is to use substitution. So if I multiply both sides of this equation by x, then I just get x times tangent of 48 degrees equals these divide, so I get h. And if I multiply this equation here, both sides by x plus 16, x plus 16, I multiply both sides by x plus 16, then the, the left-hand side becomes, and again, careful, I'm going to put this in parentheses because I'm multiplying the whole side by x plus, by x plus uh, 16. These x plus 16s divide and then just get an h. So now what's nice is I've got h is equal to this thing and h is equal to this thing. Well, when two equations are set equal to the same variable, I can set those equations equal to each other. So now I can say that if h equals this and h equals that, I can, you know, substitute that right in there. So I get x plus 16 times tangent 48, uh, nope, 42 degrees equal equals uh, x times tangent of 48. Now, we still have to solve this, and it may seem intimidating to some of you to solve this, because we've got like this tan in there. It's a little, little crazy. You have two options at this point. This is definitely a calculator problem, so, um, so we're at, one, at some point we're going to have to put up our calculators. Option one to solve this is just to graph the left-hand side into y1 and the right-hand side into y2 and find out where they're equal. So we'll go do that. So on y1 in my equation, I'm going to put uh, x plus x plus 16 times tangent of 42. And y2, I'm going to put in x times tangent of 42. Now the, the trade-off, uh, nope, times tangent of 48. The trade-off for doing it this way is you don't have to do any algebra. The, the unfortunate thing is you've got to kind of be good with the calculator and find out the appropriate window that will, have to, that will allow us to see where these intersect. Um, I'm just going to make sure my mode is in degrees. It is, okay, because the, the problem's in degrees, so I, my mode needs to be in degrees. Mm -hmm. Now if I graph, it's a little unclear where they intersect because my window is not in the right place. So what I might have to do is go to the table, second table, and kind of just get a sense of what these values are doing. So it looks like I'm going to have to make my x values. If you, you can see that the, the y's are kind of getting closer as I move up. So I'm going I'm to have to make my x values go kind of up to like, you know, at least like maybe 50, 60. So I'm going to go change my window now. I'm going to go 
uh, x min, I'm going to make that 0, I'm going to make my x max, let's make it like 70 or something. And let's make the x min, I mean the y min and y max, let's make the y min 0 and the y max, I don't know, like 50? Based on the table, if you look back at that table, that might be appropriate. I'll get that phone later. Mm -hmm. Ah, so see, it's still not, still not good enough. Still not good enough. So, um, so what can I do? I'll just, maybe I gotta go up higher, I think. So I'm gonna make my window go higher. So make it like, uh, like a hundred. So the intersection looks like it happens like right here. Maybe I need to go out farther in the x direction. So let's try to extend that. Let's make that like 120 just to be safe. And there, it looks like the intersection's happening right about there. So this might be good enough. So uh, we're going to calculate the intersection. So first curve, second curve, enter. So it looks like x equals 68.53. So the option one is graphing. And x equals 68.53. Option two, we won't do because I'm, this is taking too long. I don't want to take up too much time in this video. But option two would be to use algebra. And I'm going to leave that to you if you want to focus on the algebra you can work out the algebra here it's not bad remember tangent of 42 is a number and so is so is uh, tan of 48 so this is no different than like x plus 16 times 4 equals x times 5 it's no different so maybe put this put tan 42 and tan 48 in the calculator as decimals uh, and then and then finish solving for x you all have the ability to do that uh, but Graphing works, so I got x equal to 68.53, but of course I wanted to know what h was. So I didn't answer the question yet, but if I go up to this equation here, this relates x and h, right? And in fact, this one here is even better. It's, it's got the h solve for it. So I'm going to use this in this equation right here, and I'm going to write uh, h equals x tan of 48, but x is 68.53 and then I'm going to multiply times tan of 48 and we'll do that in the calculator 68.53 68.53 times tan of 40 76.11 so the building is 76.11 feet high all right sorry I took that that took a little long this this is I, I think it's, it's right here at this moment this equation students get intimidated by it but just note you are welcome to solve it by graphing you can do algebra too, but I don't want to. I don't want to take more time than I think I need. So, just happen. 